importance of seeing us po a positive image of ourselves on the screen. You know, uh, we don't need to always Dang feed our kids, you know, movies that, in a sense, <laughs> puts them at a, a lower level of what they can be in real life. And that's why I like riches, because if you look at riches, riches, them, all them people got money. They all bred it to the hilt, and they just live in their lives, their best life at that. And then they're dealing with internal struggles that all families face, you know. So, and that's why I like the show. Uh, I need the headset. You can't hear yourself. No. That was. A, you remember we had this. Uh, we had to switch them out before. I can't hear it's myself. So hard to get people to focus on them kind of shows sometimes because their reality is not that. You know? Right. Save. But see, we got to create a space in which that reality exists. Mm -hmm. You know, which I'm going to save this for the podcast. So, like, yeah, like one of the things, for me, man. I noticed it myself because when I shifted uh, my Netflix account and I started watching a ton of black content, they fed me a ton of black content. And so that's how the algorithm works. And so the mm -hmm. algorithm, the way it works is, is that even if the show doesn't have any black folks in it, if there's one in there in the second season, they'll show you that image because they know that you're looking at black content. And so that's a, you know, a, I, I don't like that. I don't think that they should do that at all because if you're going to show me um, a character to draw me in to start watching a show, at least have him in the show that I'm watching, you know. I mean, we can be vampires. We can be werewolves. We can be everything that you can be. Everything. I just want you to understand that because at one time it was you could be the president. We couldn't. Don't that don't work no more. We can be president too. We can be whatever we choose to be, and that's kind of what the purpose of this podcast is for in the first place. Is that we want to let's keep it centered on movies. Yeah, and, and, and that's what we do. But the thing is that centered on movies is centering it on life. So if you know in a, a movie, if you're talking about life. And you know a movie that kind of reflects on that, you're welcome to bring it up. Yeah, man. It, it, if it's positive to the black community that you think you might want to put it on black. Or people. if it has a message in it that the black community needs to hear. Because all, um, you know, Bumpy Johnson is a straight gangster, period. Straight gangster. But, you know, he's black and he's looking at distributing drugs in his community in a, a, a different light, even though it's still bad. The duality of the you know, human being. But somebody's going to do it anyway. You know, I mean, so you got a lot of, um, uh, you know, my, my saying is always the same. If a picture tells a thousand words, what does a movie do? That's right. Yeah, that's what he used to justify. He was like, if I'm not going to do it, then the non-black people are going to come in here and do it. And they're going to do it, and they're going to do it, and they're going to care about how yeah. it's done. And he's not, they're not going to give away free turkey. You know, I mean, he was he was a flawed character and a flawed character as a writer. Your character, but when he I, has flaws, is a better character. I wouldn't sacrifice the neighborhood for a free turkey, though. That's just me. No, I mean, but, you know, in this time, we can say that. But in that time, we none of us were around. So I'm glad was I was like. quantum energy at that time, yeah. that moment. <laughs> so, so that was what that was for. Oh, there we go. Test one. Test Everybody but me. Let me see. Testing one, two, three. Cutty in the house. There he is. He's in. Yes, I'm in. Uh, Deborah. Okay. Make sure when you speak into these mics, because if you're back here, you ain't gonna hear it. Come into it when you speak. Come in. And one of the things that he, that, oof, one of the things that uh, was pointed out to us last week is that we had. Um, one of the guests, he was he was f camera focused as opposed to conversation focused. We are conversation focused. Yeah, so. there's no cameras to me. I don't see none. Testing. Right. Was, he, was he talking like this? Is that good? Uh, come in just a little bit, or bring that to you just a little bit. Right about there. How's right that? Test. Say it again. Is that okay? Yep, that's perfect. All right.
Do 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 do. Um, you control. You're gonna be on the sound, so you wanna go and test it real quick. Yeah, yeah. Is that too loud for you guys right there? Yeah, it's perfect for me. It's perfect for me. We're gonna we're gonna let this play for a bit, and then we're gonna rewind. So like BlackGreatest.com. You gotta let them relax a little bit. BlackGreatest.com. Tell your daddy and mom. Tell your sister and brother. Website like no other. Yeah. Something like that. We know we just gonna vibe. We just gonna vibe. Yeah. But we just wanna hear the sound. So uh, we're gonna start up on uh, 20 seconds and we're gonna crank it. All right. Gotcha. Everybody, if you got something to say, you got a cough, you got to take a sip of water, go ahead and do it. I'm going to take a sip of this well, right water, here right up. It's right there. Oh, I got to turn that back down. So we're going to crank in 10 seconds. Anybody freestyle or sing? Anyway. Devin. Don't get James started. James will be up here rapping. James got a little something, man. James got that voice. Come on, look at I got it. Like, Yo, I got all that profanity in mind, so you can understand this. You got to be articulate, man. <laughs> all right. So, Tony Shell. Uh, Cuddy, whatever you're ready. We're ready to rock and roll. All right. Uh, Give me a countdown. Uh-oh. All right. Four, three. Uh, no problem. Everybody all quiet. It's like, oh, man, it's about to start. It's going down. It's going down. <laughs> Inner meditation. That's right. Everybody like, oh, wait a minute. But, Tony, well, you know, we're we not used to it like you. You know, you're a G, so. Nah, man, you know what it is is that, you know, the reason that everybody, the people that are here are here, because I, I sucked some energy off every one of you. Gotcha. Every one of you. And that energy, that's why we're here. Yeah. You know, we ain't use them. Yeah, yeah, my God, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hopefully, I can clean them up good enough. Yeah, so. you know what I'm saying? I hope your ass ain't super blind. No, nah, I'm not super blind, but. Uh, good Lord. <laughs> Where's the mic? Huh? Well, uh, that might be the eyeball, <laughs> I see that. not the glasses. <laughs> I, see that. I see the chromosomes in it. I can't do them. Uh, the ones you got, they just too light. So, Cuddy, will you count us down whenever you're ready? Oh, okay. No trip. No trip. No trip. Tony's fired up. Nah, man. You know, it's this energy that comes in this. You know, when we sit down in this Swirling. seat, we are going to say things that nobody's heard before. And we're going to do it from our perspective. We're going to talk about things that, you know, we see in our community and we see on the on the screen that is projected to us. And if we like it, cool. You know, mm. and it could be the bad guy, it could be the good guy. It doesn't matter to us. But if we like it, it's still our perspective as to what we're looking at. Because Power is one of the most popular shows on TV. Gangsters everywhere. But they see things that they are able to pull from it. That's why people are attracted to it. About inner power. Inner power. That's, hey, that's it. You know, and that's what we work from. Every hour. Yes. No, I mean, there's um, there's times where you got to, you know, say, you know what, that's not appropriate for what I want to show my people. You know, I mean, it's like saying uh, I'm going to watch Friends because they had three black people on it the entire time it was on the air. I'm never going to watch Friends. Yeah. This is, I've never watched it. You know, I mean, it wasn't, I couldn't relate. You know, I mean, I'm not going to – it's hard for me to watch – you know, things that are not relatable. And, but there are white films that are relatable. Yes, yes. There and are. the funniest part about it is a lot of those films are outside the country. But, hey, I think black people should, should do, like, like, there's no black people in it, right? So I'm not, not going to watch it, right? Black people should do the same thing with, like, restaurant business establishments. That's what we're going in, to. They don't see no black people working in there. I just can't deal with it. So they go in where some black business is at. So you know, are you walking to a place and you got somebody uh, looking at you? Same with a movie. Hold you know on. Cuddy. Yeah, count me down. To, give me a countdown. Yeah. All right, five, four, three. One. 
All right. All right. Well, hello, everybody. Once again, Once it's again. the Black Raiders. Black Raiders. And we are back again. This is the place where you get to see us, you know, talk about things from our perspective. Yes. And we focus on movies and television shows. Every now and then we do dabble in a little bit of music. But, bef- you know, so I'm going to say this. Before I introduce anybody, I'm going to introduce somebody. And that somebody is my right-hand man right here, Marcos oh, Mays. That's right. And uh, what he's going to do for us tonight is uh, he's going to get this place warmed up a little bit. Like I always right. do. You know, drop a little beat, little, a little saying. conscious thought for you right quick. You know, if I have to speak, there's always music in the background. Talk to him. That beautiful sound. That's how we do. BlackRaiders.com. Uh, tell your daddy and mom. Ah, yeah. BlackRaiders.com. Website like no other. Tell your sister and brother. Ah, yeah. I got my best friend on my side, Mr. Ride or Die, Tony Desmuke, y'all. Hard to rebuke what he's dreaming. We be seeming as hard sometimes, huh? But we put this rhyme down. We got a special guest in the building tonight. We got the Queen Deborah and the King James in the house. What up? About to tell us what it's all about. Yeah. Yeah. Give us this. Their journey to their quest of fortune and fame. Let's do it. Tell them about their dreams. Hope it's the bang. It's the same thing. <laughs> BlackRaiders.com. Tell your daddy and mom. Ah, uh, yeah. BlackRaiders.com. Tell your sister and brother. Website like no other. Uh, BlackRaiders.com. Tell your mother. Uh, tell your daddy and mom. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Welcome back. What episode is this, man? Man, I think we're on episode number seven. Seven. A divine number. The lucky seven. Right, man, I love that one. Let's do this. Welcome, y'all, to Black Raiders. Well, welcome back. Uh, we're once again right here. You know, we're at the media spill. You know, we want to shout out our guys because without them, we couldn't do this. These guys come in anytime, any place to help us make this thing go. So what we're going to do first, though, tonight, I'm going to introduce my first guest, all right? Now, this gentleman I've grown to, um, you know, bond with heavily. We work together. We've become friends. Uh, You know, they call him DJ Skillet on the west, the (laughs) north, the south side. DJ's in the house. And on the east side where he's from, New York City. That's right. right. East coast in the house. So this is Mr. James Gaten. And I want to just allow James right quick to give us a few words. You know, just tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, tell us about your field. Now, mind you, we when we do this podcast, what we are focused on is intermingling the culture from film and from the audience. So James is a viewer. And so the things that I want to know about from James is, tell me a little bit about you. All right, thank you, Tony, for, um, for the introduction. Um, I appreciate you bringing me in this evening and having me hang out with you guys, and it's just been a pleasure. Um, All right. First of all, you know, um, my origination is in Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn's in the house. <laughs> baby, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Moved out here to the beautiful city of L.A., 86, so I kind of like pretty much grew up out here. Love it. Back having to, um, Back to Cali. Back to Cali, where yeah. it's all the love at, all the fun, the good weather, the people. Hey, just something that, you know, you get accustomed to, just something that you love, and it's something that you just get used to. And, you know, that's why I like being out here in L.A. Well, I'm going to ask you this right quick. Sure. All right. So, um, you know, you came out here, and we we worked together. Uh, I know you work in the medical field, right? Yes, dialysis. And, you know, and understand one thing. Thank you for that, brother. No, I mean, the bottom line is this, is that, you know, your health is your wealth. Everybody knows that. I mean, to, to be real about it, a lot of us should never see you. We just got to right. take care of ourselves. We got to feed right. our minds as well as our body properly. But anyway, I don't want to go on that path. I'm going to just go ahead and ask you this question, though. Sure. So um, what's your favorite type of film that you like? Well, I love old school type of films. Um, old school. Mainly um, low budget films because they more focus on. <laughs> are, are you talking like the, the, like the, the penitentiary <laughs> joints with uh you like them old movies? Yeah, I love those old type of movies. I like yeah. the movies that don't have too much money for production because they yeah. concentrate on the plot. All right. I'm going to stop you right there. And the reason I'm going to stop you there is because it's very, this next guest that I'm going to introduce, she knows a lot about that. Okay. About working with a shoestring budget, about getting out there, busting your butt. Um, her and, uh, 
our connection is through her father. Rest in peace. Yes, sir. Um, you know, Big Feather is up there enjoying the weather. That's what I'm going to say right now. You know, right here. That's my man. Right, all right? Here. Now, the reason I bring that up is this, is that she is a filmmaker. Okay. And she's an author. Mm. And you're directing a little bit in this, t- this project. Yes, actually, I directed the whole 30 minutes. <laughs> there we go. Now, this is Deborah Harris Stone. Deborah Harris Stone, y'all. Blackradio.com. Welcome. Deborah, do me a do Thank me a solid. Thank you for having me. That's Girl, right. please. Anyway, mm-hmm. you know what? I'm Welcome just Welcome again. This one big family always gonna be one big family. And we want you out there to feel the same way. You know, that sure. energy that you give us is what we're gonna try to give you. Always. So let me get this out of the way right quick. Deborah, tell me about what you're doing right at this moment. Okay, Tony, mm. at this moment, uh, January the 14th, I will be having a screening for my short film titled Checkmate for Life. Checkmate for Life. Check it Checkmate out. Checkmate for Life. And wow. um, I'm, I'm pleased because I, I know you were out there when I started filming. That's right. Which was October, what, 2021? 20, I think it was October 21st. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And, wow. Yes, and so you go through all those peaks and valleys to get to this point to finally see a finished project. So... Uh, I'm excited, and I'm excited right. for. Uh, We're excited for you. Yeah, for the patience and endurance that it took to get it done. So I'm, I'm very, I'm very. That's. Um, a, I think that's the key word, guys. If you have a dream out there and you want to create something, you have to be excited about it. Yes. You know Feel what I'm it. The key word. You can be excited, man. That's what life is. Yeah. I mean, you know, just always try to remember. I mean, like, she knows. I mean, you know, I'm a writer, and I mean, that's the that's the publisher. <laughs> I mean, we, you know, we work together. And I know the struggle, and she knows the struggle. And the thing is, is that I want to know, tell me a little bit about you know, your sh- this 30-minute film. What is the subject matter, and where was it filmed at? It was filmed out in Burbank here, and the subject matter goes back, back when I was in Chicago. Uh, I was a supervisor at the post office, and okay. the guys would always come back late playing this game of chess. Right. I mean, they were willing to get rolled up. They was willing to get paper. They didn't Gotta care. Got to get that check they made. Yeah, yeah. Chess is chess is King James, you, you mess with chess? No, I'm not a chess player. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Queen, but go ahead. <laughs> right, you look right, like so, a chess man. All right, go ahead. You know? Go ahead, Queen. So the same, so when I moved out here, I, I didn't have a car at the time, so I'm walking. I'm walking around the neighborhood, and then I see a group of people, a group of men, they playing chess. That's right. the game. And right. then I go over to my... Um, La Tierra, around that La Cienega, La Tierra, that Starbucks. I knew Black. That used to be the Beverly spot, Hills. Queen. Yes. Yeah, that used to be the spot, right? There. Starbucks coffee. And they just playing. So I started, you know, I started really getting intrigued with this this game. You know, not I'm not going to say enough to learn to play, but enough to want to know what these pieces represented. Right, right. And why it was so intense. And once I got that in my head, then the story came. That's it's it. such a reflection yeah. of life. You know, Everyone really. should re- research chess and play chess. It's it's like life. It's Teach a it to your children. Of it. Yeah, you know, people I'm, people are the pieces in this world. Yes, it is. You know, some people are pawns, and some people are kings and queens. And one of the biggest problems is is that those pawns always run around not knowing that they're, they're, they're kings pawns. and queens. Yeah. Right, they don't know how powerful they are. I mean, because I know on that black on those black pieces, we deal with that every day. Sure, you know. So um, one of the other things I want to ask you about the project. So who you got? Um, I know you got a couple of heavy hitters in there. Well, actually, uh, Amari Washington, he's starring. Ah. And then, um, Leonard Thomas, Leonard Thomas' resume is un- impeccable. Impeccable. Right. He's worked with um, some of the big. Time to kill, negotiator, yeah. hey. do the right thing. That's right. Spike That's Lee. Right. So classic. Um, yeah, and it, and it was a blessing to get him. So right. he believed in the story, and that's what it takes sometimes. You, you know, people to believe in a story, and it's not about money all the time. No. It's about a story that has substance, and that we want to tell. I mean, even if it seems like it's a bad story, like he spoke about drugs. Uh, what point are we are we making when we leave this theater? Or when we turn off our TV, That's what can right. we get from this film? What what can we move forward with this? And um, I, I think that's one of the things that we 
Tony and I have in common, we want to write with substance. You Always. Know? Substance, um, yeah. Game seven was phenomenal, and that's a whole nother story. Game seven, yeah. check it out, y'all. Yeah, that Dr. war is still <laughs> on. Hey, don't book. think that this is the stopping point for that. This, yeah. That war is still on. I'm, I'm going to wage that war as long as I got energy in this body. Yeah. And um, I'm just tell you, all right, so uh, Deborah actually helped me, you know, jump over into the book world because I had no interest in writing a book. I, I think I'd said that to you. I had no interest in writing a book. But the thing was is that she had a, a book that she wrote, and it was very personal for her. And what the title of that book is? Uh, Trapped in a World of Silence. My if, story. Trapped in a World of Silence. Uh, once again, Trapped in a World of Silence. Check it out. And uh, it's about uh, autism. So, mm. and I know, uh, and I don't know if this is too personal for you. I don't know. I mean, you it's can okay. tell this so is my story. This is my life. This is know? her story. This is her life. And tell them why this is your story and this is your life. Well, my son was diagnosed late in the 90s. They didn't have a lot of information. Matter of fact, he'll be 31 um, next month. And I went through a lot. I went through a lot. And the information that we're not, um, I'm not going to say entitled to, but we're just not in the right areas to help our people, we get diagnosed last. It's just a lot of variables that I stumbled across through that journey. And my reason for writing that story was so nobody else, they can know how to, the diet was important. The, just so many different things were important that sure. I didn't know at the time. And with him being 31, I, you know, I, I got history. So right. um, I, I've helped so many people. I've traveled with this story. I've, um, I've got to the point now where I'm donating back to organizations and uh, black communities that don't have the resources and information available so that right. they can, you know, do some things with their children or children that they know because it's one in 42 kids being diagnosed. Right. So you're going to uh, know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody with autism. Uh, I'm going to ask you this question, James. All James right. is in the medical field. Eh? Yeah, yes, I mean, man. being in the medical field, I mean, you know, I personally think that we should see more, um, like, health-conscious um, content. Because one of the things I like about a lot of the Nigerian films is that they talk about issues, sickle cell. I mean, you know, they talk about... Uh, bondage they talk about all of the subject matter a lot of subject matter we won't touch here and so i think that we should make more films like that i mean and my question for you is this is that i'm sure that there are some crazy stories that you've had when you're working in that field oh yes um definitely um i don't know if i can go into depth with it but there are a lot of interesting things that happen people's health they're not really too waiting willing to accept that right. they're sick. They're trying to give up them cheeseburgers. And some yeah. people just like ignore the issue and this what makes the problems worse. Mm -hmm. So it's nothing wrong with being diagnosed with something sick. It's, it's wrong with you not taking care of the problem. Yeah, I just think that, you know, one of the things like, you know, um, there was a movie, uh, Denzel movie, uh, and his son had a heart condition. John Q. John Q. And in John Q., I mean, one of the things that I thought was beautiful about that film is that it showed a, a father willing to do whatever it took. Right. And because one of the things that we don't see enough of, and I, I, I think that you would agree, Marcos, I mean, I want your opinion on this. Black fathers, black parents, um, we don't see enough of that. We used to do it in the 80s. I mean, we had shows that showed it on television, but then those shows disappeared. And what replaced them was, I don't know, Reality. You know, and so what's your opinion on that, Marcus? Because yeah. I know you got one. Some people would say it's part of the, the agenda to break up the black family. You know, you normalize on television and movies and music. Programming. You know, um, you, you rarely see any relationships between the black male and female no. in a positive way on any of the uh, major networks. I mean, and that's so one of the... Over, over time, it, it, you just... It seems normal to you that you don't see that. Right, right. If you're into that matrix. like It's like being normal to see us as drug dealers. You know? Exactly. Yeah. And the fact of the matter is, is that, and I'm going to ask you this, Deborah, because, I mean, you know, filmmaker, you know, and you, tell them where you're from. 
Chicago. Midwest side. Chi-town. Right. Chi-town in the house. With right. Brooklyn representing y'all. Brooklyn in the house. That's right. Evansville in the house. Yeah. St. Louis in the house. <laughs> Ivory Coast in the house. New York. Ivory. Brooklyn's in the house again. <laughs> I mean, we got everybody here. And the thing is, is this. Is now, because everybody's here, we got a, a young lady, we got a young man, we got a young man, an old man. You know, but at the end of the day, these are all separate perspectives, but they are commonly tied together by the black perspective. Right. We have to see our lives from the box that we're in. And I say this all the time. That square that you look at be it your phone, be it your tablet, be it your computer, be it your television. Those are pictures, and they tell a thousand words. But once you set those pictures into motion, how many words are they going to tell? Because you can learn so much about Chicago, New York, Evansville, St. Louis, simply by looking at the pictures. Everybody in the world knows that there's an arch in St. Louis, Missouri. Everybody knows there's an Empire State Building in New York City. Sears Tower. What they got in Evansville? The mall? <laughs> uh, they got the Mays family. <laughs> yeah, and but that's uh, all hey. them some horses. <laughs> hey, I got a question. Yeah. King James, you a basketball fan, I heard. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ba- yeah can now, two of them. This is right here. Works. We, get, we, have, we have a queen from the shy. <laughs> and we have to talk about the GOAT of basketball, oh. which would be... Michael Jordan. Oh, there we go. Question asked. We can move on. So, I'm, I mean, I, I'm, and I'm not brother. just jumping on the bandwagon. No, that's, that's, not, dude, that's my man. era. That's, that's the, the era. And I didn't, I, I didn't like Michael Jordan, okay? And that's All the right. perspective. He earned it. Queen, you hear what he's saying <laughs> over there? But see, I'm the one that looks at it a little different. Because what's, her, what's your opinion on Michael Jordan? She from the show. I mean, she's Shot Town all day. I am Shot Town. Wait a second. And how close to Michael Jordan are you? Watch this. How close to Michael Jordan are you? I, I don't. I'm not close to Michael. No, Jordan. not him, but somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say this. I love Michael. Michael played in the best era, '90s. You know, no, playing everybody. Everything is going good in the '90s. But when you start looking at the greatest, you know, I have to give LeBron a, 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 a look, and I have to give him a look simply because he did it with odds that were not favorable. In his favor. He did it within a single household as a as a female, black female. Can you imagine what she had to instill in him? Staying you know, at people's houses and stuff for you, years. You have yes. Michael Jordan, you know, mother, father, the great late uh, Kobe Bryant, all respect. You know, they had the ideal kind of I want to say that, you know? though, since we're talking about mother and father, black relationships, it produced something like a Michael Jordan. So we can oh, say yeah, that. That's, that's good, too. You know but for, for a black woman to have mm-hmm. done that kind of job and for him to have such a, you know, of course, right now, yeah, you may say this and that, but he's pretty much been the image of NBA for quite some time. And he's done something Jordan has, wasn't able to do. I mean, he's been starting every All-Star. Um, yeah. Jordan had to, somebody had to give him that. Uh, <laughs> like, <okay. laughs> you yeah, know? It's you black know. perspective I mean, where your you know, opinion and, matters and, and, on blackraiders.com. But see, the beauty of being a black raider is this. <laughs> you got Space Jam. Space Jam. And that highlighted one of these stars. Yes. yes. And then you have the legacy, which highlighted the other the stuff. Now, I'm going to give you my personal opinion on this. I mean, because to me, if they're going to call it by rings, it's Bill Russell. Sorry, folks. If you're going to call it by rings, MVPs, and all that other stuff, uh, Kareem is our dude right down the street here. All right? So let's be real about that. Kareem, come to the show. No, Kareem, please come to the Talk show. Talk about some and, movies you watch. And, and LeBron, if you hear this, I just want you to know this one thing, all right? It'll be your family, brother. You know, um, I, 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 my Come respect on. comes to you because I didn't like you at the beginning at all. I thought you were um, somebody that they were going to name the heir to the throne. But then I saw that first game. And that first game, if you saw it, it this wasn't a rookie walking out there. That was a grown man that had some grown man skills. Yes. And the craziest part about it is, is that it's 20 years later and you're still doing it at 37. Yes, he keeps himself in extreme shape. Yes, but just we, stop being that puppet. <laughs> the, stop being the puppet. Uh, I mean, you could you could be a puppet or you could be somebody that doesn't say anything. Which one do you want? 
I mean, because I'm going to tell you right now, the thing that gives sometimes me. Sometimes silence has infinite words. Well, sometimes silence has infinite non-words, too. Because there's things that you could say that would have made it better for uh, the young kids in Chicago, South Side, growing up on the streets where they're getting shot for shoes. They, you could say something when it comes to, uh, you know, hey, we got a, a, a bunch of films that are being made. You know, let me go out there and, you know, support them since I'm breaking into this field. LeBron James got a film company. He's That's providing right. content so that we can see ourselves. Because that's one thing that is missing. People think that because it's a black film that you're seeing yourself. If you see a film that did not come from our perspective, those eyes that created that film, that is not from our perspective. That's somebody's, what they think you would do. And that's the problem. That's why we created Black Raiders, because we can go out and find content in places that um, we're the majority. Content that has really got messages that are strong for the black community. Things that, you know, we can see and take something from. And the thing is, is that, you know, I love uh, most of the black films that our black filmmakers here in the States make. But at the end of the day, when you see something that can give you something substantive, that's when you walk away and you feel, like I told you, the reason that the people are sitting here today is because every single one of them provided me some energy. Some form of their energy. And, you know, it's like when you see a film, if you can watch, uh, you know, she's got a 30-minute 30, a 30 short that's out right now. Now, I already know her. I haven't seen it yet. But when I do see it, I already know that the reflection of her What's is going called? to come through it. What's it called? Checkmate for Life. Checkmate for Life. What's that about? Actually, a, a father teaches his estranged son the game of chess, but in time for him to uh, execute a plan that goes bad. Wow. Right. And see, that's the thing. It's He's like talking about life, too. See, life. Just, you see life. what I mean? It's, it's like, like, you know, like James, I'm going to ask you this. Yes. All right. Um, this ought to be interesting. What you watching? I'm um, watching King James. Right now, um, I'm currently watching Riches. Ah. Yes. Um, What's show that, that I kind of got hooked on. That about um, where'd you find out about that? At? Um, I found out about you. Oh. <laughs> BlackRaiders.com <laughs> Black Black strikes again, <laughs> y'all. You know, recommended me to the film, and um, I went and checked it out. And at first, I was like, "What's going on?" But once I seen, you know, how it, you know, transpired, you know, the family, the money, the wealth, the problems, and you know, I more said, money, more problems. They always show the white audience going through this. Now they're showing. The, the blacks, blacks going mm. through this. You know, we have these type of problems. Also, money right. problems. You know, money issue. It's not just like, okay, I can't pay the rent. Okay, I can't. I have no. Yeah, family. that's not what we go through. We go through. How much is this insurance again? Yes. You know, I mean, stuff like that. You know, I mean, you know, do I send my school, my kid to this school, or do I send them to this school? That's right. I got two of them. I mean, it's like. You know, this is for them. I, the, everything I do, I, like I tell everybody, once my children were born, there was a queen and there was a king. The king was dead. All hell, the king and the queen. Because I am their servant. And that's what we should, that's what I want to see on film. I like in Riches, the characters. You saw Riches? No, no, I haven't. Uh, you haven't seen it yet. I'm going to just tell you this about Riches. The women in there are quite beautiful. Nina. Nina. I love Nina's mother, too. Big Nina. To Nina. <laughs> Nina. Come on All to I'm going to tell you is this. Uh, you know, when you watch a film and you can sit back and you can see your aunt. Big ups to Nina. See your brother. See your cousin. See, you know, your uncle. See somebody that you can relate to. That's when you know that you're in the black perspective. That's right. Because only you can see it and you're black. The, the, you know, we, we deal with winos different. You look at a, you know, they look at a wino, white people or any other race. You look at a wino on the street corner and you'll be like, oh, he's a wino. Man, how many of us know a wino that has given us some jewels? I mean, jewels, jewels. Drop some knowledge on you. If your car break down, he'd be the first one there to help you fix it, even though he fixed it wrong. The opinions yeah. expressed here are not entirely that <laughs> blackraiders.com. <laughs> <laughs> this... He got. He know I'm gonna press the envelope. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to I do it afraid. because in our worlds we don't see enough of us, 
and right now currently on screen. There's a lot more of us on screen, but those perspectives also are a lot of shows that are being written by people that can never see the way we see life. That's right. You know, they can go get an advisor, but if you re- if you go and take the advisor's information and you write it, you're putting your perspective on top of his black perspective. You're changing the story. You know. So I gotta ask you both this. So since you are uh, you haven't seen Riches, you saw Riches. Would you suggest Riches to her? I would, I would, I would pick. definitely would be a, suggest a pick? Riches to her because I've just met her this evening. Um, she looks like a strong, powerful woman. I can see that just yes, by sir. talking to her. Yes, sir. And that's what this film represents. Queen. So I think, I know you would love it just because of the strong black women that's in the film. Well, I will be checking it out. No, I th- you know, it's a just, it's a, you know, because like, I, I, I don't know if you're like me. As a writer, it's like you watch certain movies and it's like going to class. Yeah, okay. It's like literally like going to class. You're like, wait a minute. Um, you know, one of the films that um, I want to kind of touch on has not got a, wait a minute, three or four black people in it. It was a, a movie that Marcos and myself watched the other day, and I just, I had seen it already, and I just wanted to get his perspective on it because it's filmed in Finland. It was a Finnish movie. And this is a non-black movie. We, black writers watch everything. And it's this movie called Troll. And I'm, and I'm sure neither one of you have seen it. So. I haven't. Uh, Troll, it was, uh, it's probably, it's not the old mythology, like um, when giants used to roam the earth. Right. And uh, there's an old mythology that giants turned into mountains. So the mountains you see now are like sleeping giants. Right. So it was like they, did, they were digging in a, Mountain, in a mine, yeah. They awake the giant. And it goes back to even an older mythology of the Titans, which is a, right. uh, actually an African mythology. Mm-hmm. Research that. Um, it, it was cool. It had like a good scenery, you know, CGI. He kind of looked real. Yeah. Looked like some big um, burly uh, European dude. <laughs> yeah. You know, but what I thought, I, you know, we were watching the film, and I didn't think initially that he would, you know, like the film. But I wanted to show it to him anyway because I'd already seen it, and I wanted to get his perspective. Now, my question for you is: Would you recommend it to either of them? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a cool movie. You know, it's good for like couples. You know, you think nothing else on, you can check it out. I mean, and you, you know, you, and you might get to the end of it. And the beauty of it is this: <laughs> I mean, is you know, that King James over there, you know, talk about. That. But let me say this: There is a lot of films. You know, I think films have their designation for it for purpose and use. I mean, if I need to get myself up, if I'm watching, you know, I could watch Ali and get, you know, get energized just from watching Which the movie. one? Ali had a lot of movies. Man. I mean, literally just about anything that he has been involved with um, because of his, you know, he had this perspective and that, and he talked about it all the time. Peace of the God, Ali. Hey, I drum percussion. For Ali's 50th birthday at the camp joint in LA. I heard that, man. Yeah, Shoot, man. I, I, yeah. I was a piece to that. It was an honor. No, I mean, one of the things that I, th- I, I got to ask Deborah, when you're writing a story um, and you're, you know, does the, it, when you're putting it on the page, does your imagery correlate at that moment to what you're going to try to put on screen? No, I have to see it. I almost have to see it from beginning to end. Right. In my head, and and it may take a, a few months, right? And I haven't wrote not one type one line because it's in my head. I have to see it first, yeah. And then I can play with how it's going to go on the paper. Yeah, I mean, you know, because yeah, what do you mean play with it? You know, play with you know people. You know, when I, I was told to just tell the story. Sometimes people they get caught up in the context of how it's going to be read to others. Now you do that at the next process. Let the editors deal with that. Right. You tell an authentic story because if you tell an authentic story, it's going to come across that way and it's going to reach the people that you're trying to reach. But if you get caught up in, oh, I need to say it this way and such and such might see it, my grandmother not going to understand mm-hmm. or uh, somebody going to know it's me. If you get caught up in all those uh, elements, uh, it makes the writing process not not a pleasant one. Right. I mean, I, I'm right it's there. It's a jewel, y'all. Check it. Swallow that. Yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, it's... When you're creating these stories and these images, you know, it's like, you know, I don't, I feel like I'm living it when I'm writing it. I mean, it's like, I feel like I can see, 
every character that I've written about, and if I, I could run into them walking down the street because they become that real to you. When they become that real to you, that's when you, you, you get that bond. Do you that become connection. that character for a moment? Do you become that character? Yeah. Yeah, because I don't know how you I'm feel about too. it, but, you know, like um, Paul Wells. I mean, Paul oh, yeah. Wells is me, you know. I mean, and it was easy for me to find that because it was, you know, I, you find somebody that's relatable to that. And that's why in films I continue to say that there's a black perspective. Because a black writer, or, or uh, you know, like Antoine Fuqua, right? Mm -hmm. This guy is, his eye is phenomenal. And when he puts something on the screen, you are able to like, it, I don't care if it's, the, uh, it, they got emancipation out right now, right? And Antoine Fuqua is going to probably catch flack because his lead actor is Will Smith. Now, I have to ask this question. Man, catch flack from who, dude? Yeah, I mean, but the thing is, you got to understand is that when you, when name. I say catch fly, it's going. I mean, catching fly means that as a as a, a writer or a director, that you don't get as much work because somebody else controls that purse string. And the thing is, is that they did this film, and I've been hearing mixed reviews on the film. And my question to everyone here and everyone in the audience is. Do you think they should judge the movie off the slap, or do you think they should judge the movie from the art? Because that's what it. I, I like mean. what the Queen just said. You know what I'm saying? Don't even think about what other people are thinking. You know what I'm saying? You got something to express within you, a storyline or whatever, a drum beat, whatever it be. You just got to express it and just worry about the repercussions. Like I mean, what, what do you guys saying? think? Yeah. Well, I, you know, sometimes it's a season. Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of movie, you know, might not be the season that people are ready to see that right, right. now. You know, it's, you know, you have all those, uh, it's moments. It's like when Tyler broke into the movie business. People want, black people wanted to laugh. They were tired of the 90s right. and the killing and the drugs. Yeah. They was ready yeah. to laugh. So mm -hmm. sometimes it's about um, the season. I don't I don't think, I, I personally, um, how unfair for a 30 year career of uh, somebody that has given America film after film after film after film and, um, you know, kept his image pretty much squeaky, squeaky clean, clean. And doing it. And to have an incident to be judged harshly as far as his career. Roman Polanski um, did not get that. I don't, I don't believe in that. So I can't speak. On didn't that. Roman Polanski win an Oscar from overseas <laughs> because he was, he didn't come back to the United States because they were going to arrest him and send him to prison for rape. That's Roman Polanski. All right, look him up. All right, now the reason I bring that up is this: is that I think that we as an audience. Let me ask you something. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> I think as an as a as the audience, the people that are watching these movies, you should be able to see what you want to see, and you should be able to relate to whatever it is that's being presented to you. You should not be manipulated by, um, you know, mass media. I mean, you should be able to say if there's a great movie out of Nigeria. Uh, coming out of uh, Brazil, any of these countries, as black people, we should be able to see ourselves, all pieces and parts of ourselves. That's right. And the thing is, is that Riches is a British movie. I've noticed the yeah. accent. That's yes. British. That's a British show. Now, I didn't want to cut you off like that, but I wanted to get that out. Go ahead. Well, that was off topic, but I'm going to ask Queen over here. Do you feel that a husband should defend his wife at all moments that they're together? <laughs> wow. Um, in other words, was the slap justified in your eyes from BlackRaiders.com? Sure. We'll get your opinion on that. I mean, I mean, you have to accept that everyone's going to have a bad day. And that just was one of his bad days. Caught him on and a bad day. <laughs> I mean, that's the only way you can sum it up. I mean, if you, I just said, if you've had a squeaky career from. Would you be mad at, would you be mad at your husband? If he, if he did something like that? No, because I'm not here to control. You can only control yourself. Right. So, That's you know, true. So she I'm, not, I'm not here to control anyone if, if you know, because she's not dealing with the, you know, he has to deal with what comes with that. So right, right. She, she shouldn't, no, no woman should um, have to be trying to control or he sh she shouldn't have done it or he should she should have grabbed him or whatever. It's, um... That's what Brad and Die is all about. Hey, I'm with you no matter what. You know, you did wrong, you did right. I'm not here to control you or reprimand you. 
Right. Support. Support. That's, right. That's it. So y'all hear what she's saying? She would have supported. Yeah. You just like, all right, yeah. James, you go act a fool. You go act a fool. That's all it. Right. I mean, and now, oh, well, I mean, since James is sitting there, I'm gonna ask you this. Oh. basically the same question. James, I mean, James. yeah. Um, I definitely um looked at it over and over. At first, I thought it was a, a hoax or whatever, but after looking at it, and I'm just judging me and my relationship, my right. wife. And I thought about it. I said, if I would have jumped up there in that situation to go up there and slap him, my wife would have said, baby, no. Right. It would have been some type of no, don't mess it up right now. Hold up, this right, is not right. the time. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. That's what my wife would have done. Do you think that could have happened in the, in the time frame of the reactions that she, you know, I mean, just, it's I not like he, well, I think she wanted, you know, I think she, she wanted it to happen. Yeah, she well, I look. mean, you know, we, we can never see what's inside her head, though. No, no. I mean, it's so, and we can't see what's inside his head. But I will say this, though. I mean, Black just, women do, they do communicate with their facial expressions. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I know I'm married. Yeah, she to gave one. like, uh, <laughs> yeah, what you yeah. gonna do with that? Yeah, what you gonna do with that? You know. <laughs> but you know, the thing is this, though, is that. You know, I'm just going to go back and just go right to the nuts and bolts of it, and then we're going to leave this subject alone. All I know is this, is that every award show has a tape delay on it. And, you know and if that was something that was that, um, you know, tragic for this That's right. show that is not being watched the way that it had been watched, I think that probably drove the Oscar ratings through the roof. All right? So... Somebody made a decision to, to allow it to be seen. Exactly. I mean, because, you know, if you look at a Dave Chappelle show, every camera, is, every phone is taken before you enter. So that nobody's getting content that they should, shouldn't see. And the thing is, is that the, the studios, I don't know what you guys did. Don't come after me. If you do, I'm going to fight like hell against you. But the bottom line is this, is that you made a decision to show it. Somebody did. I mean, and, and that's the thing. You know, we as a black family, we got to start keeping our problems inside our family. You know, we got to stop letting everybody, you know, go running out and, and, and bad-mouthing somebody that could, you know, provide jobs for 100 people every time you shoot. That's right. You know. So, anyway, that's just my opinion. But now, I got to ask, what have you been watching on television? You watched anything lately that's good? <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm not a real, um, it's kind of hard. It's like being an artist and going in the studio making a Being Picasso singing, walking through, you know, walking it's, it's through a museum. Like Your life is a movie. That can throw you off somewhere. Yes, it if can. If you're really trying to uh, put out content, because everybody has the same, um, you're not the only one that come up with the idea. It's just ideas that I, execution I did. So mm -hmm. it's like a rapper, when he's ready to do his album, he's not listening to, uh, Another rapper. Drake and all them on. It makes it difficult. It makes it difficult. So I'm not really a um, TV person. I go to the movies and I catch something on Netflix. Anything but, you uh, seen on Netflix that's good? Uh, Sandra Bullock. What was that last? Ah. Movie? Her last film was phenomenal. The on one Netflix. where she came out of prison? Yes. All right. I can't think of the name of that. Yes, and you just hit um, me with it. I've seen it. Unforgiven, unforgiven. I think it's yes. unforgettable or unforgiven. Yes, it might unforgiven. have been unforgiven. Mm -hmm. When I'm, I'm a Sandra Bullock, I like her work, but it was just a nice uh, storyline. I, like I thought story that storyline smoked. Yeah. I mean, it was really it, nice, and, and it was in her raw. She, you know, she no makeup. If uh, you had to give it an dark. Afro pick or an Afro, how many fros would you give that show? Even though it doesn't have any black folks, you know, really of importance in it. Mm -hmm. I give it a four. That's you see. That's what I'm talking about. What would you What would you have given um, Troll? Troll. Um, I don't know. I give it a three. It's one of the movies you can watch like at three in the morning. Yeah, you, and you ain't gonna be mad it. about it. You know, you're gonna be you you're gonna be like yeah, I enjoyed it at the end. I hope. You know. Give it a three for three a.m. No, watch this. Them type of movies. What you giving uh, Riches? On a scale of five froze. One fro, two fro, three I'm gonna, fro. I'm gonna, um, I haven't finished the whole series yet, but I'm definitely going to say five because it's five. Oh, yeah, man, wow. <laughs> that's a good. This joint. show is that look, fire. Look, wow. I'm, I'm not a big movie person, movie right. watcher. Right. So you know, for me, and they got you on a series that you're watching, uh, and I'm definitely not a series person. See, me either. So for me to go back <laughs> and press play, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's that's saying a lot. 
Oh, and I also uh, saw Teal. Teal was done good. I, I, you know what? I haven't seen that yet. I, you know, I was getting ready to about? watch it the other day. What's that about, Queen? Oh, it's Teal. The Emmett Teal story. Oh, um, yeah. I think it was done. In, was I, it done correctly? I, I think they did a fantastic job. I really, I really do. When you start touching those, you know, historical <laughs> stories like that, that made such an impact on not only the, you know, the world, but for the black community, the races. It, it was just really done uh, in a way that. Uh, we can understand the mother's perspective. That's what I'm talking about. That's what we we know the story because the story has been everybody knows it. You know, in history forever. But from the mother's that kind of strength and to to do what she did and they really portrayed it to what we know the story to be. I, I believe they did a great job. She wow. really wanted to show what racism was. How many froze? Yeah. Or is it an Afro pick? Now Afro pick for definition for everybody that. Does not know. An Afro pick is a must-see show for the black community. Must-see. Must-see. You got to see it. It's got, you know, it portrays us in a Good way the that's community. real. You must see. You know, and you got to see, you know, because it shows you, you know, a level of entertainment and art at its highest level while still being relatable to you. That part. That is an Afro pick. That is something that I don't care. I, I mean. It could be any type of show. It could be a gangster show, whatever. But when they portray the story the way that you can relate to, that's a huge difference than seeing a show that you're going, oh, wow, there are a bunch of drug dealers all over the place, and you're from the Midwest, and you've never even seen a drug. Those rowdy Negroes again. You know, I mean, I'm from, I'm from <laughs> small-town America, you know, and from southern Illinois to northern Illinois is a huge difference. It's a hu- it's things that you will see in Chicago that you will never see in the city. Well, you used to not see. Not better or worse, just different. Just different. But nowadays, it's like, you know, small town America is worse than big city, or, you know, yeah. the big cities. And people don't believe that. But it is true. So, I mean, if you said, it, you feel that's an Afro pick? Yes. Well, yes. Okay, five yeah. joints, man. Yeah. Yeah, five joints and the pick. I would, right? I, so, yeah, I would get that be simply because the, the strength that, we were able to actually see. We we knew about it. We read about it, but to see them um, portray it and the just to have to receive her son back that way, oh, that was, man. you know, and to and ha- make power a decision to say, "Hey, I'm going to have an open, open cast, cast so the funeral. world can, you know, see what has happened and bring attention to this." So that's courageous. So and and, and like I said, they did a great job. Well, I'm yeah. just telling so, you right now, I haven't seen it yet. Another pick from BlackRaiders.com, you know, well, we y'all. You know, Afro pick in the house. Queen Deborah, King James, y'all. Check them out. Ooh. What you got going on? New joint. No, I was just. For the next segment here, we're going back, y'all. <laughs> he just hit me with something out of nowhere. I'm like, he was feeling that moment. He was feeling that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Man. You never know what happens on BlackRaiders.com, well, y'all. I'm going to say this to you, though. I mean, I truly, uh, you know, the way that you describe that. I mean, that is the way that, you know, when you, you spoke because you're a woman and you're a mother. Black and queen. as a mother, I can't see from that perspective, but the passion that you told that with is obviously something that I need to see, you know. I mean, so, um, you know, I mean, I don't know what we looking like to, uh, on our clock, you know, so D or anybody, who, how we looking? Big ups to D in the back, y'all. Ivory Coast. Oh, in the house. All right, cool. Big ups to Cuddy. Yeah, this is that we're gonna remove that in the edit. But anyway, so oh, what yeah. we're gonna do right now is we're gonna um you know, so we got a lot of suggestions for films tonight. So we got Troll, we got Till. Troll. Three um, three AM movie, y'all. Check it out with your lady. Check it out with your you with your man. Yeah, I mean, you know, we got riches. I mean You may finish it. Yeah. <laughs> this dude is <laughs> you know, uh yeah. but you know, we so we got a lot of good content that we talked about tonight. And this is what you can expect from us in the future as well. Um, but what I want to do right now is, uh, you know, we're about to step on out of here. James, do you have anything that you want to, you know, finish off with? Something James. that you, I know you're doing the DJ Skillet thing. You know, talk to him. Yeah, um, right, right now him. I'm currently, um, you know, doing a little DJing, you know, small time DJ. That's right. Um, old school, anything old school, old school rap, old school R&B, old school funk, anything old school. That's what I'm into. You jam, you jam with percussionist, man. Come yes, on. yes, yes. He got to. Come DJs on, come and percussionists. Come, come, it's like, it's well, like H and 2 and O. Man. Yes, definitely. Um, And, you know, being out there in that music scene and making yourself available, meeting people and just having fun. You know, playing music 
I would do it for free. That's right. It's amazing that someone would pay me to do what you do. To do what I do. Well, I'm going to bring you back uh, because the reason I'm having you come back is because there's a show that uh, I want to talk with you about. Because as a DJ, I think the show is, will be a real fun conversation. And I think you'll enjoy it as well. So maybe I'll bring you both back. But right. it's the show is called The Get Down. And it's on Netflix. And it talks about the origins of hip hop. But it's a love story combined with the mixture of hip, uh, hip hop and um, disco. Because at the time that the film was being told, I think it was uh, 4 Plus 1. I think that was the name of the group. Old school uh, rap group. But it's a fun story. And actually, uh, Jaden Smith's in it as well. So it's a fun story. Jaden Smith, son now, of Will Smith. Now, um, check out his movie, Deborah, Emancipation. Tell me uh, what we need to know before we get up out of here about you and what you're uh, doing and you know how we can support what you're doing. Let the audience know as well. Well, uh, I talked about my film, but uh, autism advocacy is very is very uh, dear to my heart. Uh, I'm focused on helping us as a community learn more about it, get early diagnosis, learn how to treat the issue instead of uh, running from it. It's a gift, and we have to um, understand that a lot of people don't know. You know, it's hard to. Uh, actually accept something that has no um, cure or no diagnosis. So that's a it's a rough spot, but I just think if we come together a little bit more, like Autism uh, Speaks, uh, probably the biggest autism connection going on in the country. Everybody knows about the walks and everything that they do, and we need to do something, and that's what my job is to try to enforce that for our communities that we – don't get left behind because we don't understand or we're not knowing how to get the help, the assistance and all that, you know, things that help you move forward. Because if you don't have an early diagnosis, you're already behind. The, behind. It's just early diagnosis, that's the only thing that can help. That's so right. I'm focused. Pre-health. Yes. Pre-health. I'm Question focused for on you. the autism. Um, but you got your film. I mean, yeah, you, know, I our, you know, your life, you know, uh, the beauty of what you do is that you deal with what you do and you still are able to create. I'm so still able to create. Tell me the story. Uh, talk to him about that piece that you have. Um, What's that about? Uh, Checkmate for Life, like I said, is coming out. Um, it's a short film. We already placed at the uh, San Diego Film Festival for next year. There so, you go. There you um, go. I'm happy about that. And like I said, it's about a, a story about a, a chess. Chess is actually... Um, life so right. i was able to put that together i don't you know with a short you got to be careful you don't want to get too much of the storyline right. but as i said it is about a um, a father a strange father that hasn't hasn't been around his son and he uh, tries to teach him the game of chess not knowing that he's using it for other purposes that doesn't work out for him in the end so um my purpose for creating that was just to show the power of how that game can be executed, whether it's for the good or the bad, it can be executed if you understand the movement and how chess and life correlate as far as how you have to calculate all your steps. And that's how I feel I've been with this journey of writing. It's been a calculated step by step. All right. Well, checkmate for life. Checkmate for life. Checkmate. Checkmate for life. You're, you'll all be right. seeing about it. Hey, <laughs> hey you know, you do me a favor. If you heard our words, please share it with someone else. Checkmate for life. Uh, look for it. Uh, support this Black Queens film. Uh, right. That's what we're here for. We're here to support your projects as well. So, and um, you guys know what the most powerful piece, well, it's, I wouldn't say the most powerful, but the most dynamic piece on the board is, is the queen. Is the queen. That's right. A lot of people lose their heart when they lose their queen. They don't know what to do when they play chess. So they go, oh, my Lord, my queen. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> hey, sometimes you got to pick up the pieces, though. But you can still win. Now, uh, Marcos, uh, and you got get any, a new queen. You got any last <laughs> Even <words>? more powerful. <laughs> Gee. <laughs> it's just like life. Yeah, that's what she Wonder was saying, woman. though. It, but that you is you life. You get a new king. Well, so any last words that you want to give them before we get up out of here? Um... BlackRaiders.com, please subscribe to stay alive with a new vibe. My man Tony by my side right there. Thank you to the Queen Deborah you, King James. Got it. Thank you, guys. Once again, the same BlackRaiders.com. Tell your daddy and mom, website like no other. Tell your sister and brother. Blessings. Right. Yes, I. And I'm going to just uh, say this right quick. Um, I want to thank my guests for being here. 
Right. I mean, because, uh, you know, we are all trying to make our way through this world doing our thing. Um, I just appreciate people that are willing to come down and talk from our perspective because we don't always talk from our perspective. We might be in, you know, we talk how we feel in a situation, but our situation is always the same, the black perspective. We got to live it. We got to support it. And when we got filmmakers that are sitting here, uh, making good product, making good shows, support. If you got a DJ sitting out there and he's, you know, dropping them beats just like you like them, support it. You got a drummer out there that's dropping his drum beats, support it. And if you got a podcast that's sitting out here like we're doing, I mean, we'd love for you to support it. Because yes. at the end of the day, uh, Black Raiders has never been us. It's always been you. Because you are all seeing from the same black perspective. Check out a film, check out a show. Let us know if you got something out there that we haven't seen. We're here to support it. Uh, we're checking out right now. This is blackraiders.com. And uh, always remember, follow the fro because I got to grow the fro for this show. See where it goes, y'all. <laughs> wow. All right. Thank Black you. Raiders. Thank you. Bless I. You're welcome. <laughs>